what I thought I was going to share with you yesterday. <laughs> it's not what I'm going to share with you today. Funny how that happens, isn't it? Yesterday I was dwelling among stiff necks and um, uncircumcised hearts and ears. So maybe you're glad that that's not what I'm going to share. <laughs> I felt nudged in a different direction this morning as I, uh, as I drove down. And you may have heard me share something of this story before, but it was, it was what I think the Lord put on my heart this morning. So I'm going to read from Luke chapter 8 and start at verse 26. Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 26. They, that's Jesus and his disciples, sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs were feeding there on the inside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into them, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. he was a prisoner and we may not have this man's sickness but we might know something of what he was going through the isolation he was going through the isolation from family and friends from all that was familiar the fear the inner torment Maybe you know something of the inner torment that affected this man. I'm not going to focus on the demons. I'm not going to focus on the spirits. You may be disappointed or relieved at that. I'm going to focus on the man. Held captive, tormented and alone. Jesus and his disciples... They were in the boat at the beginning of this story. Where had they come from? Well, they had been in the storm in the middle of the lake, which happened just before. So I would imagine the disciples were a bit traumatised by that, a bit unsettled, a bit shaken up by it, by the time that they had had on the water, these seasoned fishermen who were familiar with the water 
in this experience the like of which they'd not known before and seeing something of who Jesus is in a way that they perhaps hadn't quite seen before. And now they land in the region of the Gerasenes. So these poor shaken disciples are shaken a bit more because the land of the Gerasenes is Gentile land. So if the disciples were shaken before, they're really truly shaken now because this is an unclean place. Can you imagine all that would go through their mind? All the rituals that they would have to undergo having stepped foot on unclean ground. And now to make matters worse, they step ashore and approaching them is this man. Naked, dirty, dishevelled, maybe ranting, certainly shouting loudly. He'd been living among the tombs, horror of horrors, more uncleanness. It was unclean upon unclean upon unclean. And I can imagine them kind of tugging at Jesus' sleeve, touching him on the arm, kind of backing away. Come on, Lord, come on, Lord, it's not good to stay here. Let's go somewhere else, anywhere else, anywhere else will do. That's so often our response to challenging situations, isn't it? We want to back away. Let's not stay here. But Jesus wanted to stay. You almost kind of get the impression he'd gone there with a purpose. Maybe he saw what the disciples saw, the outer appearance of this man, but maybe he saw something else too. He saw the captivity, the body, mind, spirit, (coughs) captivity of the man. He saw the social isolation. He saw the uncleanness, the chains, the unpredictability and the huge strength. But someone who was crying out for help, even though that wasn't quite the language that he used. Verse 28 says, When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. The man fell at Jesus' feet. He acknowledged his lordship. He might not know quite exactly who he was, but he knew something of who he was. And he said, don't torture me. That word literally means examine. Don't examine me. Don't look within. Don't see beyond the outer. Don't judge me. Don't examine me. That's quite an example that we could follow, isn't it? To fall at Jesus' feet. To acknowledge his lordship. And in a sense, we, I don't think we'd quite say, Lord, please don't examine me. But it might make us examine to know our own uncleanness in his presence. To know our own captivity. To know the things that hold us. To know ourselves unworthy. And you know, this man didn't actually ask for anything other than to not be examined. And the response of Jesus is to set him free. You know the story. The demons were allowed to go into the pigs. I always worried about the pigs. (laughs) (laughs) Always worried about the pigs. If I wasn't worrying about the pigs, I was worried about the pig keepers who'd lost their flock. That um, herd, I suppose. But this is a Jewish culture. And the pig keepers, we forget, I think, that there was an audience to this. The pig keepers, what did they do? They rushed off to tell 
the village people, the townspeople, what had happened, and they came back with a crowd. Now, what was the intention of the crowd, I wonder? Were they coming back with welcoming hearts to say, wow, Lord, look at what you've done. Isn't it great? The man is going to be restored to us. Is that what they were thinking? Or were they a kind of a bit mob-handed? We've got to get rid of this situation before it gets worse. Is this man going to be expected to come back and live among us? Can we trust him? Do we know him? Maybe his wife had remarried. You just don't know, do you? But what did the crowd find? What did the crowd find when they came back? One of my favourite verses. They found the man dressed and in his right mind. Dressed and in his right mind. Sitting at Jesus. That simple line speaks of such transformation, doesn't it? So different from the man that we first met, who was naked and dirty and ranting. Now he is dressed and in his right mind. So where did the clothes come from? <laughs> when I looked up the meaning of the word clothes this morning, Yes, they meant, you know, things that we wear. But do you know, it literally meant, I clothe. I <coughs> provide clothing. And I've always thought that Jesus must have said, have my cloak, or have my wrap, or something. You know, come on, disciples, what have you got that's spare that we can give this man? And when I discovered this morning that the literal meaning was I clothe, I kind of felt that that is right, that the clothing was given by Jesus and his disciples. But do you know, I don't think he was only clothed in clothes. I think he was clothed in peace. He was clothed in dignity. He was clothed in safety. He was clothed in wholeness. He was clothed in restoration. This is a bigger clothing than the robe. And in his right mind. So I looked up that word too. And that means temperate, with self-control, sober-minded, so this man transformed body, mind and spirit. So how much does that resonate today, I wonder, with our need to be clothed and in our right mind? To be, to be free of the things that chain us and shame us and hold us torment us to be freed from isolation to be reconciled maybe to be reconciled with events that have happened to be reconciled with people to be reconciled with our past and where we've come from maybe there's even a need for reconciliation with the Lord And it's about recognising our need <coughs> to fall at his feet, acknowledge who we are, acknowledge who he is, and invite that same transformation to be at work in us. Let's pray.